Hi folks, Kevin here. Well, I'm back here working on the Honey Hut. It's July 21st. It's a Friday. I believe it's the 21st. And one of the things, if you're not building very often, uh, constructing new buildings and all, or building a shed, building whatever, a lean-to or whatever, some of the basics can be a little bit challenging. And I've gone over in previous videos uh, techniques that I've used when I was building the work area, the, the chicken coop that's attached to the greenhouse that's hopefully going to go up this summer sometime. But uh, I've gone over some of the techniques that I've used. Um, one of my friends, John, said to me, geez, you should be doing a, you know, a, a time lapse for these buildings and on. So this year I decided, well, with the honey hut and the greenhouse, that's what I'm going to do. So the honey hut's the first one so I can get the bees all set for this winter. So this building is basically 12 foot wide and almost 48 feet long. And... Uh, and the posts on this side of the building, the taller side of the building, are 16 foot six by sixes. And on this side of the building, they're 12 foot six by sixes. And uh, so there's a difference of four feet, regardless that, that it's just over eight foot. So those are eight foot sheets that you see from here to here. Uh, eight foot T111, uh, similar to plywood, four by eight sheets of, sheets of plywood type material. And uh, that's the finished siding like it is on so many of the other buildings I have on site. So uh, if this side of the building is just over 8 foot tall and this side of the building is just over 12 foot tall, the difference is 4 foot. So the rise going from this point to this point is 4 feet. Uh, and it's called a, a, a 412 pitch. And this is the shallowest pitch of the buildings that I have on site. Uh, some of the other buildings are 612, 1212, 912, 1012, those sorts. It, it, it worked out for the buildings that I was doing. Um, this isn't exactly 412, so I have to figure it out in order to be able to cut that angle correctly going down along the rafter here. And uh, so how do I determine that if, if I'm not positive it's actually 412? Because when I cut the po posts off, I use the shortest posts on each run, so there's the 16-footers here, and then there's the 12-footers over here. And I would use the shortest posts and cut them all off at that length. And they're three and a half to four foot in the ground. So what I decided to do was to go up and take some measurements, and I thought I'd show you just how I do it. So I'm gonna to switch to the other camera, one that's setting right here, and hopefully you'll be able to hear me because it's not too windy right now. So let me switch up there, hold on just a moment. So I'm up on the scaffolding to make this job a little bit easier. So when, when we're talking about 412, 612, what's the pitch of the roof? That helps us to determine how we're going to cut the angles on the siding. So when we say 412, we're talking about the, the, uh, the difference in height over the run. So it's rise over run. So the 4 is the rise and the run is the 12. So this is the run going along this way here. And this is the rise. So there's a difference between here and here. Now I need to determine it. So the first thing I'll do is find a spot on the wall where there's not something that I'm going to have to be notched out. So this up here and this spot here where the top plate is, I'm going to have to notch that out. So I'm going to miss that spot. And I'm just coming to just this side of where the notch is, and I want to make sure that this is plumb, straight up and down, nice and level. Okay, so now we know what our, what our plumb line is, our straight up and down at this point here. Now, I'm not going to go over a full 12, 12 feet, and my sheets are 4 foot wide. They're 4 by 8 sheets, 8 foot tall by 4 foot wide. So what I'm going to do is make it easy for myself is just come over four feet. So I happen to have a four foot aluminum straight edge. So that base of the plumb line that I just made here, I'll make sure that that's even with there. And I'll come over and I'll mark this spot. Now that's our run. That's a four foot run. Next. I'm going to take my level and 
and make sure the base is exactly four feet from there with that line. Then I just want to make sure that this level is straight up and down level. Now there's two sight viewers on it. There's one here and one up there. This is real easy for me to see when I'm right here and there too. So now, these two lines are four foot apart. They're perfectly level, meaning plumb straight up and down. So now I can go ahead and measure the distance from here to the base and the distance from here to the base. So let's see what they are. And it's important when you're doing this measurement to always use the same side of your tape measure. So this is 49 and 3 quarters. and 33 inches. So the, the difference between the two, I have to subtract these two numbers. So the height here is 49 and 3 quarters and the height here is 33 inches. So basically we got a, a 16 and 3 quarter inch rise per 4 feet. So every four feet from that point to here goes up 16 and 3 quarter inches. Another way of looking at it is we can divide 16 and 3 quarters by 4 and that gives us 4.1875 inches rise for every 12 inches of the run. So however you look at it, uh, or we can just, just it, so it's, it's basically a 4.1875 or 4.2 uh, 12 pitch. So when we think about it, when we say a 612 pitch, we know that, or, or a 12 12 pitch, that's basically a, uh, a perfect right angle. Uh, so it, for every 12 inches uh, on the run, it's going to go up 12 inches. That's a 12-12 pitch. So a 6-12 pitch will be for every 12 inches we go along on, on, on the ground level, we're going to go up 6 inches. And since, like I say, it's imprecise when I'm cutting these posts, I use the shortest one, whichever one's the deepest in the ground. I top all the rest off, put the top plates on, get everything set. To turn, you know, and I cut my rafters. I made the other video about cutting the common rafters getting the bird's mouths, those two little spots where the rafter actually sits on top of the top plate, both there and here. So we get everything, and we get our soffit cut, and we get our, um, our fascia cut, all of those things I went over in that video. But now it's trying to make sure that we get our angle correct when we're putting our siding up. Whatever height you wanted to leave it at, that's fine. You just know that whatever the height is uh, here, for four feet, we have to go up 16 and three quarter inches. So that's pretty simple. I just have to add 16 and three quarter, or subtract 16 and three quarters. So when I put this first sheet up here, whatever the height is on this side of the sheet, I'm going to subtract 16 and three quarters from that side of the sheet on the other end. Hopefully, this will make this uh, make sense as we go along. Something that I uh, forgot to mention is the importance of using flashing to protect the sheets that you've already installed. So since these sheets come in 4 by 8 sheets, it's not going all the way to the top. And when it rains, or condensation, moisture could get down between the uh, laminate layers of plywood or textured 111. So to help prevent that from happening, water getting in between the two sheets from the wind-driven rain, we can use some flashing. This is called Z-flashing, just because there's two right angles at opposite uh, angles to one another.
called a flashing, as you can see, this sheet sits right on top of the flashing. And the water, if it does come down, it'd have a hard time working its way up underneath the bottom of this sheet. And it's impossible for the water from the outside to get down in on top of this sheet, which would cause, cause delamination where the, the wood would swell and separate off the, the various layers. So one more important thing to consider when you're using sheets like T111 that have a pattern to them and they have a right side and a left side <laughs> to them or a top and bottom based on which the orientation is. So in order to maintain that groove in T111, on one side of the sheet, on, uh, as we're putting up there, there's an underlapping layer. So there's an extension that's, that sticks out. Uh, that goes under the, follow, the next sheet. So when we do our measurements, we need to make sure we account for that half inch uh, uh, difference. The other thing is uh, getting it oriented correctly because if I, just cut, if I were to cut a sheet of plywood that didn't have this, these patterns to them, it'd be real easy. It wouldn't matter which, which, which side was up or down because you could use either face of it. Well, this only has one presentable face, the side with the grooves in it. So I need to make sure that the, uh, the tallest side of it is the side that has the overlap. So the other sheet will go underneath this one, and the next sheet will go over this side. So, and we want the bottom <laughs> to be level, level with the ground. So that's something, because you could easily have taken the measurements from the other side and made the angle the opposite way. So here we are, we're uh, 35, I'm sorry, 35 and a quarter inches here and 18 and a half inches there. So 16 and three quarter inches difference so it drops down from this point 16 and 3 quarter inches here. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this. The other thing I'll do is make sure that my spacers underneath this, I don't have my blade too deep. I go about a half inch, 3 quarters of an inch deeper than the textured 111, the, the material that I'm cutting. And then I use 1 and a half inch or 2 by 4s to space it and make sure I'm not cutting through them as I'm going through this process. So I hope that explanation made sense. The winds were calm, so I think the audio probably would come out. So although I say this is a 412 pitch, it's, it's better if I just cut everything as a 412 when I was cutting the siding, there'd be a big difference at one end. You'd see a gap increasing as I was going down the side. So to prevent that from happening and keep it all equal distance from the, from the top, uh, that's what we should do is go through that, that process of establishing two plumb, plumb lines which are vertical level at a prescribed distance since these are four by eight sheets I'm just cutting them at four, uh, at four feet apart so I know I, I need to make a difference of 16 and three quarters of an inch per, per sheet so I hope this made sense I hope it was somewhat helpful give us a thumbs up if you think it was thanks so much for watching and have a great day